In this video, I'm going to be walking you through the very basics of ventilators. And I think that before you start getting into all the different settings of ventilators, you really have to understand these four concepts of PEEP, FiO2, tidal volume, and respiratory rate. And once you can kind of get a grasp of how to adjust these settings and how they're going to affect the actual ventilation uh, and oxygenation of your patient, then you can kind of uh, understand ventilators a little bit better and go into the more specifics. So the first thing is we're going to talk about what each of these are and then how they affect oxygenation and how they affect ventilation. I think that's the easiest way to approach these. So the first one um, is P, positive end expiratory pressure. It's the pressure that you have um, at the end of expiration to kind of keep uh, your alveoli open or your airway open. FiO2 is the fractional inspiration of oxygen. Remember, in uh, the air that you breathe, it's around 21%. That's kind of the, the normal that you're going to be dealing with. Tidal volume, what that is, remember, if you remember your flow volume loops, this right here is tidal volume. It's the amount of air that in a normal expiration, remember this is your peak inspiration and your peak expiration, just in a normal um, inspiration and expiration, how much volume are you inspiring versus expiring? So it's, it's that height right there. And respiratory rate is respiratory rate. So now that we kind of have that under control, what we now need to figure out is which ones are gonna affect oxygenation and which ones are gonna affect ventilation. I think that's a very important concept that in my opinion was very difficult to understand or to remember which one was which, um, but it's actually much easier than you think if you can kind of break it down like this. So the most obvious ones in terms of oxygenation and ventilation are gonna be, well, oxygenation, that's gonna be FiO2, right? If you want to provide someone more oxygenation, and this is changing their oxygen saturation, you're gonna to want to affect FiO2, right? And then in terms of ventilation, it's gonna be respiration, right? The more respiratory rate that you have, or the less respiration that you have, it's gonna affect ventilation. And remember, our, uh, the number that we're looking at in terms of oxygenation and ventilation is gonna be SaO2 and carbon dioxide. That's, that's kind of how they differ. But then the next thing is a little bit more complicated how, or a little bit hard to remember. How do you know which one goes where? How do you know what affects ventilation and what affects um, oxygenation among PEEP as well as a tidal volume? So I think the easiest way to remember this is uh, minute ventilation. Remember this is the amount that you're ventilating every minute is respiratory rate times tidal volume. So. If you want to affect ventilation, you're going to affect tidal volume as well as respiratory rate. So that's how you get, that's how you can change CO2. And then for oxygenation, it's going to be PEEP. So PEEP as well as FiO2, if you can increase these, then you can increase your oxygenation. And the, the best way to explain this is like this. So if we have different alveoli, and this, let's say, is a PEEP of zero, this is a PEEP of five, and this is a PEEP of 15. So when we have alveoli that are collapsed, how would you think oxygenation would be? When we have a small alveoli that's not filled up, because remember, PEEP is what keeps these alveoli plumped up. If we have uh, zero PEEP, then that means our oxygenation is gonna be pretty low. The actual transport between the alveoli and the arteries is gonna be pretty low. Now, if we increase it, we're gonna have a much better oxygenation and so on and so forth. So that's kind of how I, uh, how I remember which one affects oxygenation and which one affects ventilation. And it's a very important concept because when you actually get an ABG and you're looking at it and you wanna figure out, well, is this individual uh, getting enough oxygenation or are they getting enough ventilation and you need to know how to adjust the settings? Well, that's how you know if you're gonna adjust FiO2 and PEEP versus respiratory rate and tidal volume. For more educational resources, like our medical ID cards, check out medicalbasics.com.
So now let's look at an example. So let's say we have an ABG that looks something like this. We have a pH of 7.1, meaning they're acidemic. We have a CO2 of 70, which means they're retaining quite a bit of uh, CO2. And we have oxygenation of 65. And this is a PaO2, so anything above 60 is typically uh, pretty okay. So for this individual, what would you want to change? Well, I want to drive this down and I want to drive this up. And I'm, I'm okay with the oxygenation at, at this level of 65. So what do I do now? How do I fix this? So let's walk through an example. Let's say our pH is 7.1, our CO2 is 70, and our PaO2 is 80. And uh, just so you can have a reference, pH of 7.4, CO2 of 40, and PaO2 of about 80 are gonna be normal. So oxygen or PaO2 is a measure of oxygenation, CO2 is a measure of ventilation. And so our PaO2, so our oxygenation is good. Now we'll look at our CO2 and really it's too high. So we wanna to try to bring this down and we wanna to try to bring our pH up. So how do we go about doing that? Remember that our ventilation or our respiration is really gonna be dictated by these two right here. So what we can do is we can increase our respiratory rate and increase our tidal volume. And that's gonna make us blow off more CO2. It's gonna decrease the CO2. And by doing that, it's gonna increase our pH and it's gonna make this a more balanced system, okay? The converse would be true is if we had a CO2 of let's say 20, and we had a pH of maybe 7.6, and we want to try to bring the CO2 up, what we would do is we want to retain the CO2. Remember every time you respirate, you're blowing off CO2. So what we're gonna do is, for the tidal volume and the respiratory rate, we're just gonna decrease that. And these are very simple examples, uh, not necessarily going into the numbers, but just kind of thinking about how we would adjust tidal volume as well as respiration. Now let's walk through a different example where we have a pH of 7.4, a CO2 of 40. So both of those are normal, but now our O2 is 40, which is much lower than what we would want. So we wanna drive that up. And so how do we go about doing that? Really it's PEEP as well as FiO2. We just increase PEEP and we increase FiO2 and that will hopefully be able to increase our oxygenation. Um, and so there's actually a very good table that you could go through. It's called ARDSNET. Um, ventilator protocol that has a table of how exactly you change FiO2 and how you change P. Because a lot of times people would think, well, can I just increase FiO2 to 100 and drive up the O2? Well, well actually, that's not going to be the best way to do that. You're going to want to increase FiO2 as well as P. It's not going to be an all or none, just like respiration and tidal volume. You don't want to just increase the respirations to 80 and then keep the tidal volume the same, you wanna kind of drive both of them up at the same time. The same thing goes with FiO2 and PEEP and even more so because if you give someone just 100% oxygen, oxygen actually for the long term can be toxic. So we want to um, increase FiO2 as well as increasing PEEP. And there's actually a really good table that tells you how much you should increase each one for every increment of O2 that you want to increase it at. And that's ARDS Net Ventilator Protocol. But I think that if you understand at least these very fundamental concepts of PEEP as well as FiO2, affects your oxygenation and tidal volume and respiration affect your ventilation, then you can at least have a very basic understanding of how to change uh, some of the ventilator settings or at least what's kind of going on in their minds when they're changing it. Be sure to check out our website, medicalbasics.com, for more educational resources like our progress notebook. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more tips and lessons.